But let's get right into it. Now, you see pictures on the screen, and we're talking today about choices. If I said to you, I place before you a car, and by the way, that's a Jeep, and a donkey cart, what would you choose? But, but hold on, I also say to you, choose the car because it's your life. Your family will be able to drive a boat in comfort and they will be safe. Choose the car. What would you do? I like your answer, Warren, because, you know, surprise, I thought I was the only one that while I'd want the car, I'd, I'd, I'd kind of be thinking about the donkey cart as well. Because have you ever, has anybody ever seen a donkey cart? No. no, they're popular where I'm from. And the donkeys tend to bounce about. And I've always wondered what it feels like to bounce about on a donkey. But I've never ever gone near to a donkey because they kick. And I hear that, you know, that can be really terrifying. But we're going to talk about that today. But there's, God says to us in a similar way, I have set before you life and death. But not just that, he tells us, choose life so that you and your children may live. And he tells us what this life is. He qualifies it. For the Lord is your life. Who is this Lord he's talking about? No other than Jesus, our own Lord. And he says, you know, God says again, I lay a stone in Zion, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone a sure foundation. So even as he tells us to choose life, he qualifies all of it and he tells us that in addition to that, the one who trusts will never be dismayed. Isn't that fascinating? He doesn't just say, I put before you life and death, you better choose life. He's telling you why choose life. He's saying this life, this Lord that I'm telling you to choose is your life. And when you choose him, you will not be dismayed. But what does dismay mean? I had to look it up because, you know, you see these words and you kind of think, okay, dismay is a bad word, but listen to all of what goes with it. It says if you choose life, if you trust in the Lord, you'll not be sad. You will not be in depression. You'll not have reason for alarm or disappointment. Isn't that reassuring? So Warren, why like me would you choose the donkey cart? It kind of doesn't make sense, does it? But like you, I want to know what's going on in the donkey cart, and it's sad. But let's go on. God qualifies himself as well as he says, you know, he tells you why you can trust him. He tells you. He sits enthroned above the circles of the earth, and he makes, oh, I'm going too fast. He stretches out the heavens like a canopy, a tent to live in. Now think about that. Everything we see as we look, you know, in this grand universe, God did it. And he didn't say he made it a house. He said it's a tent. A tent is something that you can just pick up and move, on, move along with. So in other words, all of what we see, and that's so vast, for him it's just a simple thing. It's no big deal. Can we trust a God who says this, who qualifies himself, eh? Absolutely. Absolutely. And he tells us more. He says... To whom can you compare me? Look at this. Look at the vast area. No, the earth doesn't look like my distorted figure there. But look at this. Look at everything you see. To whom can you compare me equal? Says the Holy One. This is God saying to us, do you have anybody? Do you know anybody that you can compare me with? Lift up your eyes and look to the heavens. Who created everything you see? Who brings out the starry host? Every single star one by one, and he has a name for every single one of them. And in addition, he says, because of his great power, God is saying of himself, because of my great power and strength, not a single one of them is missing. Can we trust a God that is able to do that? It appears so, doesn't it? But how do we do this? What does trust look like? And that's how my mind works. You know, it's easy to say yes, but how do I really do it? And when I thought about trust and, and what it looks like, I thought of a baby. Look at that baby. He doesn't look like he's worried about Ebola, does it? Does he? How about ISIS? 
How about, you know, if his mother is going to breastfeed him later? He doesn't seem disturbed at all. He's just asleep in arms that look like arms of love, absolutely at peace. And another image that we always hear about when we talk about love is this one. And I like this because that little girl isn't just stepping off the ledge. She's flying off. Think about that. That is the epitome of trust. Imagine her daddy saying, jump. And she, she doesn't hesitate. She flew off. No, thank God he caught her. And that's how our brain works. Oh my God, will you catch me? But that is trust. And this one is one I'll talk about a little more. Jesus, I am resting. I am taking it easy. I'm relaxing. I'm chilling out. I'm going to sleep. And th this issue of rest is, is something I think God thinks, you know, is, is really important. And um, we're going to look at some people today who, unlike most of you in here who would have chosen the car, would have chosen life, did something a little, you know, quite interesting when God gave specific inst instructions. So let's look at his instructions. <clears throat> Isaiah 28, 12. So God, the context is God is um, talking to Isaiah about how his feelings about these people and about instructions he had given them. So this is one of the instructions. So he said, this is the resting place. Let the weary rest. Let the tired people take a break. And he said, this is a place of repose. A place of repose is a place of rest. And then again, he says two chapters down, in repentance and rest is your salvation. In quietness and trust is your strength. But guess what the end of the first verse is? But they would not listen. And again, the end of the other verse says, but you would have none of it. Guess what those people said? And this is what God is saying of them. He said, you said, no, we will flee on horses. But not just that. You said we will ride off on very fast horses. So look, now let's look at it. These people aren't choosing the car. They're not choosing the donkey cart. They're choosing a horse instead. And they're deciding, OK, we're going to get on this horse and we're going to ride away very quickly. But there is a, a very wise man said, you know, there is a way that seems right to us, but in the end leads to death. Um, this is what God says in response to the choice to do what he didn't say. He said, whoa, and just that word alone, alone it kind of pulls you back, eh? And I, and I looked that up as well. Woe means grievous distress. So grievous distress to the stubborn children. It also means trouble and affliction. So woe to you children, you stubborn children, declares the Lord. Those who carry out plans that are not mine. Those who are doing whatever they want to do. He goes on to say, you're forming an alliance. You're forming friendships, but not by my spirit. Heaping sin upon sin when you do this. And this is what these people did. They went down to Egypt. And he said, you went to Egypt, but it's not, it's not, it's not just that. You went without consulting me. You look for help to Pharaoh's protection, to Egypt's shade for refuge. Does this sound like us when we have a problem? So clearly there, clearly there was a reason why they wanted to go to Egypt. Something was happening where they were. But two chapters before, God had said, rest. He said, take it easy. Stay here where you are. This is a place of rest. Stay here. But they had other plans. Does it sound like us sometimes when we know that it's better to trust and obey? It's better to just chill out, relax a little bit. But we have to be busy trying to figure out who to go to for help. And we're forming friendships and we're forming relationships. But God is saying, I told you something two hours before, a little bit before, two days before. I told you to take it easy, to rest. But then this is what happens when we do what he has not told us to do, what he doesn't sanction. This is what happens. 
He says, Pharaoh's protection, the places that you have gone to, the places that we go to will be our shame. And in addition to that, it will bring us disgrace. Doesn't it sound very opposite to what he had said before if we trust in God? That, that trust, that trust will cause us to not be in depression, will cause us to not be in affliction, will cause us to not be in trouble. But here he is saying that when you do what you want, when you go off and make your own plans and form your own friendships and go to places where you didn't consult me about going, we do the opposite to what I said to do. It will bring you shame and disgrace. Now, what's interesting is that we tend to do this a lot. And if I think about just myself, you know, I, th there, there are several eras in my life, and I'm sure in your life as well, where I'm able to choose life. But there are one and two areas where I think God doesn't know what's going on. Does he really see what's happening? Where is God? Why God? And I have literally said, you know, why? If, if, okay, God, since you are God and I believe that you are God, fix it. Since you, and, and this is when you, you pray those prayers when you, you, try, you try not to sound too unchristian. You know, I do believe that you are God. And since you are God, change it. Don't you see what's happening? I am in distress. I'm in pain. Help. But this is what God says. Why do you complain? Why do you say that my cause is hidden and disregarded from the Lord? So just like me, God is saying to all of us, What's, why are you complaining? Do you forget that I made everything that you see? Why are you complaining? Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. You remember what we said before, that he can be trusted because he created the universe and everything we see. So why is it then, if we know that in the back of our minds somewhere that he can be trusted, that somehow when we're in trouble, we complain. We wonder where is God, and we feel like he doesn't see our pain and our distress. But it's all in the Bible. He said, have you not heard? I am from everlasting to everlasting. Why are you complaining? Then he goes on. He will not grow tired or weary. So remember, remember, we're talking about rest. And it's saying that this God who is from everlasting does not get tired. So when I saw this, I had an idea. So if God does not get tired, why not let him do all the work? Why not let him deal with all those things that are disturbing me or disturbing us? Since he's the one that's saying, you know, I have the strength of a thousand men. I can go on and on and on. You need to sleep. You need a break. You need rest. Why not just give him my troubles? And um, this is what he says of himself. He gives strength to the weary. And he increases the power of the weak. And this is, this, this is um, Isaiah chapter 40, 14. He says, I know that even young men grow tired and weary. Young people who are supposed to have all the energy in the world. I know, I know that, that they get tired sometimes and they will stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. Those who trust in the Lord, that firm foundation, that cornerstone, that rock, will not only not be dismayed, but although you're tired, although you're weary, he will give you strength. And I like the eagle. That same verse continues to say, they will soar on wings like eagles. Now, the eagle, I've, I've, I had to do a little bit of research on this. There's something going about on the internet about how the, how the eagle operates. And the fact that he, um, he the eagle, doesn't fly with other birds. So you will not see an eagle flying with a sparrow or, or any of the smaller birds. The eagles fly higher. And 
they as well, they, they tend to want to, they take the updraft from the wind. So very, very strong winds, winds. They allow the wind to boil them up. And, they're able, and on the strong wind, they just spread out their wings and stop flapping. They stop working. So all that flapping and all that work, when that turbulence comes, they are able to just relax. Think about that. So not all that work of flapping, but relaxing. And, but not relaxing. He's not relaxing in a, in a little breeze. He's relaxing in turbulence. Possibly a storm, very high winds. Are there high winds in our lives, storms in our lives, turbulence in our lives that possibly we need to be relaxing through? He says, those who hope in the Lord has this promise. They will soar. And the eagle as well, he sees from a far distance. He's so far above his trouble. He's allowing his trouble to strengthen him and give him peace and give him, give him that. He's resting in his trouble. Isn't that just fascinating? Rather than fighting it through, he is resting. And this is what God says. When you hope in the Lord, you have that promise. And he says, even if you're not soaring, you will run and you're not going to get tired. And even if you decide not to run, you will walk and you won't be faint. Imagine that. God gives us a hope of strength in him. Um, and it's, it's amazing that we have the choices again. The car or the donkey cart. And I hope when we have these choices again, we will choose life. So we have the choice, life or death. What will we choose? Life. Why will we choose life? Because that's the end life. Because the Lord is our life. Yes. And he gives us all kinds of promises for choosing him. And as, as, as I stand here today, you know, there, there are several... I know I'm no different from anybody else, and the same challenges I have, you have, you know, in worrying about what's going to happen tomorrow, or how do I handle this financial issue, or, you know, what do I do about, about a brother that just doesn't know the Lord, and we have these things, these considerations, you know, what do I do at work when my boss is just really very annoying? or he just doesn't understand, or he, you know, what do I do with, with, with life? How do I live this life? And God gives us a solution. He says, choose me. Choose me. And, 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 it's, and I'm saying this in a church and not at some crusade where there are, no, where, where there are seekers. God, God was talking to his people when he said, I'm putting before you life and death. Oops, what did I do? Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> so he's talking to his people. And in the same way, we have the same admonition. Choose life. And what does it mean to choose life? It means choosing the Lord consistently. And how do we choose the Lord? What is the evidence of choosing the Lord? Prayer. Prayer. Any more? Eternal life. How about trust? Peace. peace obedience. Rest assured. Rest, and you rest assured that God is in control. God is in control of our today and of our tomorrow. And, and our, our future. He is in charge. And who, more, who better to trust than the God who says, look at everything around you. Look at the universe. I may, it's, it's just a tent to me. It's not a mansion. It's, it's limitless when we look. But he's saying to me, it's just a tent. It's just a tiny thing that I can fold up and put away. Every star has a name. And in the same way he says of us, every hair on, on our head is numbered. 
every single one. Think about that. If he cares about the sparrow, how much more does he care about us? So I'm admonishing us and I'm encouraging us to take a break. Listen to the things that God has been saying to us, you know, for a while. The things that he says in his word to us as, you know, as, as we, we're struggling through situations. Trust him. Trust him and relax. Now, there's something that we do. We're going to finish early today because I'm not the real pastor. <laughs> um, but um, there's a song that... I really like it's called no sacrifice and um, for me it's uh, well at home what we at the end of the Sabbath typically we have what, what is called a meditation song and it's just a song for everybody to take away as we leave church in the after in the evenings so this song for us at you know listen to the words of the song and I hope you you as as you meditate individually you'll, you'll have your you'd have your own moment of prayer um, so close your eyes, do whatever you need to do, but meditate on the words of this song. <clears throat>
Can we do that? God who created the world, God who created everything we see, your thoughts are higher than mine. Your love is different from the love I have. So I'm giving you my life. As I choose your life, I'm giving you mine. Because you are bigger and better than everything I see. You are beyond all of my concerns and all my distresses and all my disturbances. I am choosing not to be shamed and choosing not to be disgraced. I'm choosing to rest in the assurance that God who holds the stars in place can deal with the little things in my life, the things that seem insurmountable to me. I'm choosing that you can manage them because you are God. We acknowledge that you are omnipotent. We acknowledge, Father, that what is impossible with us is possible for you. Father, we have, we have heard your word that everything we see is sustained by you. And Father, yet still sometimes we worry about the things in our lives. And we're committing today, Father, to surrender our lives to you again, to surrender our moments to you, to surrender our choices, to surrender our relationships, to surrender our journeys to you, Father. And in doing that, Lord, we, we are choosing life. We're choosing you. We're choosing to do things your way. We're choosing to spend time in your word, to hear what you have to say to each of us so that we will know what your instructions are, mm -hmm. so that we can stay away from those things that will bring us shame and disgrace, but we can rest in the God who, who, who promises that we will not be dismayed. So, Father, we're surrendering to you. And we're trusting you, God, that you know what's going on that you, and that you are truly in control of not just the big things, but the little things. Thank you for being capable, God. And thank you for hearing our prayers. And thank you that, you know, when you come, you promise that we, will, we can be in your kingdom with you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.